part, I want to cover the subjects of retinal detachment. Retinal detachment can be primary detachment with tear or secondary tractional detachment. Here you can see we can have a smooth retinal detachment or a folded retina. But as you notice here, the line is highly refractile, very comparable to that of the wall. And in the Abe scan, you can see that the retinal spike is very high compared to the wall. If you compare that to the peak of the possibitor detachment, and you can notice here that the possibility detachment is not that reflectile as that of the retina. If the membrane is attached to the center of the disc to the aura serrata, then this is a total detachment. But if it's attached to the wall, not reaching the aura serrata, it's a partial retinal detachment. Retinal detachment can be an open funnel or a closed funnel. A detached retina is usually of a very high spike, 100%, but if the retina is atrophic or if there is falls of the retina, then the spike will be less than 100%. This is the difference between the retina spike and the posterior vitreous spike. You can see here the difference between the reflectability of this membrane and that membrane. Sometimes when we have a pseudovitreal detachment with blood on it, then the spike will be high, can be misleading, but if you like a retinal detachment. But if you notice, if we follow this all the way, the, there is a marked difference in the spike of this part and that part. So this will help to differentiate between posterior detachment with blood and retinal detachment. Again, I want to remind you that if a posterior detachment is still attached to the disc, to a disc, it will be eccentric in attachment, while in case of retinal detachment, it is attached to the center of the disc. We have a thick membrane here attach it to the center of the disc. You see the movement. You notice here there's some folds of this membrane. Again, if you are not sure if it's a retina or pursue vitreous detachment, we make sections from the center to the periphery. If it's a retina, it will be all the way from the center to the periphery, very high. While in case of pursue vitreous detachment, as we go from the center to the periphery, the peak will be less and less and less. If you see the movement, compared to that of vitreous, but the movement can increase if the retinal detachment is fresh 
bullet detachment with large toes, but it can be limited if it's a long-standing retinal detachment with posterior vitreous fibrosis. This video will show you the difference between the movement of retina detached and that of the vitreous. Here we have both retinal detachment and posterior vitreous detachment. The second type is traction retinal detachment as cases with diabetes or fibrosis for different other causes. The point of attachment between the posterior vitreous and the retina can be one point or can be focal traction to the retina making focal detachment or the retina can be detached like a tent, this is the vitreous and this is the retina, or can be a long area of contact between the vitreous and the retina, making a tabletop form of detachment. With the posterior vitreous detached, and you notice in some areas, there is contact between the vitreous and the wall with traction on the retina. Here, here, Notice here the traction between this area and the retina and the vitreous. Another example. We are asking the patient to look at different directions to examine the peripheral parts of the retina and the different quadrants.